issues here this evening, which is really beginning to find, uh, uh, cause me a, a bit of stress because I, for some reason, things just did not want to cooperate. So I'm trying to see if I can get things operational here. Now it looks like it is working now. Well, that's good. That is good. Okay. So, um, my teleprompter's decided that it doesn't want to work. I don't know why, the, uh, just the visual, so I can, when I look into the camera, I can see the monitor, so I can see that I'm in frame. Anyway, I'm not going to get too technical on you here. My apologies that I was away last week. I had uh, fallen asleep very early on Monday evening, around 8 p.m., I think it was, something like that, and woke up uh, sometime after 9, 20 after 9, just crawled into bed. I was physically exhausted, and I needed uh, needed some recovery time, and then I tried to do it on Tuesday, uh, which was out of the question, because the network was busy, as was Wednesday and Thursday, so I thought I could try and get on Friday in the afternoon, because ordinarily Friday afternoons are not super busy for me at work, and I, I do work from home on Fridays, but unfortunately this past Friday, well, I guess actually fortunately, because it was very productive for me, I, I ended up having to work straight through till 5 p.m. I did accomplish a lot, so that was good. You know. And I actually have to uh, meet with a client at 9.30, so I can't go much past uh, 9.25 tonight. I have a client in another part of the world that I need to uh, help out this evening. So hopefully I can uh, I can have a productive evening and we can have a nice chat. I don't know why today I uh, was feeling... I didn't sleep wonderfully last night. Tossed and turned a fair bit. And then today I kind of felt... Uh, well, it wasn't a terrible day. It was not a super busy work day. It was relatively quiet, and uh, spending a, a lot of time in solitude when it's not very busy with clients tend to get a little bit um, inward, I think, at least for me when I don't have anybody to talk to, I can get a little withdrawn, I think that's a better term, withdrawn, that's kind of how I'm feeling this evening, a little withdrawn, hey Stephen. Hey, Mikhail, I hope you guys are doing well. I am, yeah, a little off tonight. I had some dinner earlier, some pasta. That was nice. Went for a walk. It's quite mild out this evening in Ottawa. It's not winter-like at all. The canal did open for three days, but it's not going to be opening again anytime soon. It doesn't look like. It's just, um, the winter's not cooperated the last two seasons, which is tragic because... Looks like the ski season will be shorter than I thought it would be, and I haven't gotten out yet. Normally by this time I've been out a few times, but been very busy, and uh, since I sold my car, I can't just go at the last minute. I do have to plan things out, so that and the fact that my back has been giving me problems, so I'm trying to get a lot more exercise so that my back will be doing better so that I can ski, because it's something I love doing. But yeah, I did feel a little... Uh, melancholy, withdrawn today. I did see the sunshine. I didn't get out to, to um, bound around in it at any point. I, didn't, uh, I, I finished work um, after four and I needed to lie down for a bit because I had a horrible migraine. So I, I rested for a bit and then left the house around 5.30. So the sun had already set, so I didn't get any of the sunshine today. But that's okay. 
tomorrow is another day, thankfully, and there is uh, sun expected in the forecast. I think we have four sunny days in a row this week, which would be more than we had in the entire month of January and and December as well, because December we only had three sunny days. So seven sunny days in two months in the dead of winter. Yeah, it kind of kind of weighs on you a little bit. So when I sit under all these lights here, and there's a lot of them, <laughs> a tremendous amount of them, it, uh, I think it helps rejuvenate me a little bit, along with, you know, sitting here and discussing what I'm going through and, and what I'm feeling and, and how, the, uh, how the mental health is doing at the moment. So, yeah, that's kind of where I am. A little, little, little uh, melancholy. And that happens, you know. Uh, it's, it's only human. I don't think that there's anything I can do to, to cure it or fix it other than just try and work through it, meditate, do some breathing exercises. Of course, working uh, this evening will actually rejuvenate me just before I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> But that's okay. That's okay. I'm getting paid for it, so I'm not going to complain. And uh, it's a client in in um, another part of the world whose time zones are radically different. They're, they're um, I think, fourteen hours ahead of us. So I, I have to work work late for them from time to time. But that's okay because it's early for them, late for me. All part of the gig. One second. A little bit of heartburn from the pasta, I think. I've been getting a lot of heartburn lately. I think it might be time to go see the doctor and see if I have the acid reflux disease. Because um, heartburn is horrible. Yeah, that the um, the lack of the lack of sunlight, the lack of daylight, really does affect a person because you're you're not getting the vitamin D that you so desperately need. The thing is, if you can get 15 minutes of sunshine a day and it doesn't have to be, you don't have to sit out in a Speedo or anything like that, uh, 15 minutes of sunshine a day could be on your arm, your face, your hands, back of your neck, just 15 minutes a day. And Although the sun does shine every day, it's been overcast for two months for the most part. So not getting the sunny days that we also require and desire, the country's such as Canada and, and Nordic countries, for example, people f- even further up north than I am, oftentimes have a lack of vitamin D because they're just not getting the sunlight. So it's been a, it's been a tough winter in that sense. It's been mild and not a lot of snow. It's quite warm today. It was above zero, so that's warm for Ottawa in February, trust me. We do always get a February thaw, usually around this coming weekend, the last uh, two years ago, we did not get the thaw. It stayed cold right through, so that was very fortunate for Winterlude, which is Ottawa's winter carnival. And last year and this year, it's just a different story. It's been so mild, which has brought a lot of people out, but it's just not feeling winter-like. And that's kind of a bummer, especially when you're, you know, looking forward to frolicking, if you will, in the snow. So I really could use some winter, winter playtime. I need to get skiing. I need to get uh, cross-country skiing. And uh, although there is, the canal is not open, there is an outdoor rink at City Hall just a few blocks away from here that is open to the public. So I just need to get my skate sharpened and, and go for a skate. Just, you know, th- there is a rink across the street, an outdoor rink, but uh, conditions aren't the best right now. So the city rink is refrigerated and the ice conditions are always very very good the also the uh, governor general has a a free skate that you can go to uh i'm not sure if it's every day but i know they have it on the weekends and i've done that in the past too so perhaps um mm, mm, no this weekend's definitely out of the question (laughs) this weekend is definitely out of the question i have a busy friday evening actually Tuesday and Thursday evening, I have to set up for a, a party for Friday evening. And then Saturday, we're doing the pubcast, for those of you who are interested. And then Sunday, uh, I'm going to try and rest and recover as much as possible before the Super Bowl. Which, you know, I always enjoy watching. It's it's not the great cup, but, you know, 
It's always good. I find it a good uh, a good evening of entertainment. So, yeah, that's going to be uh, it's going to be a very busy weekend. So I don't think I'll get out skating, but we'll see. Maybe Sunday, perhaps on Sunday, if I have a little bit of energy left and uh, feeling up to it, maybe Bridget and I will go out for a skate. City Hall or Governor General, probably City Hall, because it's just a short walk from here, and then we can go and watch the Super Bowl afterwards. I think that sounds like a good plan. Don't know, honestly, who's going to win. I am. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I kind of want Kansas City to win, only because I think. Um, well, the league certainly would appreciate that. Travis, Travis Kelsey, and uh, and his uh, beloved partner Taylor Swift would uh, certainly generate some income as they added about $330 million to the riches of the team this season because of the television ratings for people getting, you know, people, young people for the first time watching football just to get a glimpse of Taylor Swift, which the NFL loves, which is why they show her all of usually 30 to 45 seconds in an entire three-hour game, though. So before people get bent out of shape about that, it's not like, it's not like, She's being interviewed throughout the match. They're just showing her with uh, Travis's friends and family and watching the game. Anyway, I'm not going to get into the political aspects of that, the, the silliness that it is. I just hope for a good match and hope that it's entertaining. And really, that's all I can ask for. I mean, after all, I'm not one to put money down on it. I just I don't see the point. Not, not my thing. Not a better, not a gambler. Never have been. Just doesn't doesn't really give me the thrill. You know, I've been to Vegas a few times, and each time it's just twenty five dollars a day. That's it. Slot machine, or maybe craps, or whatever, or, or, or blackjack. But I either win or I lose. But it's like if I lose the twenty five, that was my day's entertainment. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. You know. As soon as you win something big or significant, you know, win a three, four hundred dollars, something like that, cash out and walk away. That's what I do anyway, because I'm like, well, I'm up, so I might as well stay that way. Like I said, though, I'm not a gambler, so I, uh, I just enjoy being in casinos. I like the sound, the sights. I do re- realize that they can often be a den of of uh, sadness for a great number of people. I do acknowledge that. For me, uh, I've always found them exciting places to be. But I'm not really a gambler, so for me it's just the spectacle of it. But I have definitely seen uh, people who are struggling emotionally and, and with addictions. I've witnessed it, and it's, it's uh, yeah, it can be pretty sad. So I don't, I don't go often. The last time I was in a casino was two years ago. Yeah, two and a half years ago, actually. So see what I mean? It's just not a thing for me. And there's a couple around here. It's just not a thing. Prefer to go to the pub or a hockey game or a live uh, music event of some type. There are a few places I like to go to watch live music. I was out Saturday night with uh, with Bridget and we caught a few minutes of a band at uh, the Carlton Tavern, which is kind of a legendary place here in Ottawa. They have live music every Friday and Saturday and they have a really good band playing mostly, uh, I guess you could say, nostalgia, 70s and 80s tunes, Fleetwood Mac, Eric Clapton, that sort of thing. They're very good. Quite enjoyed it. I didn't stay long, though. I think we were there maybe 30 minutes because we we'd gone out for dinner earlier. And who's kidding who? Um, staying out past 11 o'clock on a weekend, on a weeknight. It doesn't have the appeal to me that it once did, I think largely due to the fact that I wake up every day at 5 a.m., because, you know, I have responsibilities. The weekend I'll wake up and then go back to sleep and get out of bed at 8. So that's sleeping in for me. But it's nice to get out. It's nice to get out and, and have a, a social night. We try and uh, we try and make every Saturday date night something, do something different, you know. Go for dinner, go for drinks, go to see a live band, go to a spa, whatever we can come up with. And this weekend, well, after the pub cast, I'm... I'm not sure. It all depends on how much gas is left in my tank because those events usually take a few hours, uh, four to five hours, and I can be quite tired at the end of it because it's a lot of work. But 
I do love doing it, so it's it's worthwhile to me. Anyway, you can always check that out on the on the other uh, channel that I contribute and uh, and uh, contribute and produce. That was the word I was looking for. Stumbling for my words this evening. I am a little tired after all. It was a long day, a long day of solitude, and I find. Something a friend of mine pointed out to me years ago was that I tend to get my energy from other people. So when I sit around my house and not talk to anybody while I'm working, because after all I am working and if I'm not getting any calls, it's kind of a lot of reading technical stuff, which keeps me mildly entertained, but it can make me rather withdrawn, and I think that's what's going on with me today. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Mikhail. It's, uh, I think it is important that we dedicate time, uh, you know, a, a, a special time that we set aside for one another, because our lives are pretty busy, and we, we get together a couple of nights a week, but uh, can't always, can't always have, you know, on a, on a Tuesday night, it's like maybe you have five things you have to get done that evening, so it's not like you're having personal time with one another. I'll go over to her place, help her out with a couple of things. and She'll come over here while I'll be doing something like this and some production, and then, you know, we'll, we'll sit and talk for a little bit. But Saturday nights is kind of our night for the two of us where we don't really allow any distractions other than the ones that we invite, if that makes any sense. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Fleetwood Mac cover band. Very cool. Very cool. <clears throat> I, I forgot to bring a glass of water with me. Well, I'm not going to step away from the camera for that. I'll get one just before I start my call with my client in a few moments. So this was... Uh, yeah, last, last week again, I apologize. I could not get things together. It was a very busy week, and the network was quite chock-a-block full of people using time slots for the it's complicated I'm not getting into the technical aspects but there was just no time in the schedule for me so I will get some stuff done this week I have a jazz show to produce along with a couple of um, two to five minute short video clips that I'm going to put together they won't be in the vein of the 30 to 60 second shorts those are a little bit harder to do I tend to use a, an AI to do that I just ramble on for five or ten minutes and then have the AI create something because the editing process is time-consuming. Although with this new computer, it is vastly superior to what I used to do. It's just much quicker and simpler. And uh, I like it. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Anyway, I don't want to get into the technical aspect of things. I mean, that's not why we do this. It's just... Uh, Sometimes it's in the front of my mind because it's so much of what involves my day-to-day. -day. But today it's uh, trying to find the reason why I'm feeling so quiet and empty and alone. And I think it has to do with, with the solitude today. I didn't have enough uh, face time with people. And that changes tomorrow. I'll be in the office, so I'll have some nice conversations and that will energize me. Then I'll be heading over to Bridget's tomorrow evening to uh, help set up for the birthday party. And that should be fun. I won't be there for the party. It's teenage girls. I'm just setting up a karaoke system for them so that they can uh, sing and have some fun and uh, do whatever teenage girls do. I have no idea. I'm, I'm very old. <laughs> I haven't been a teenager in uh, 39, 30, 36 years. 36 years. I had to think about that. Yeah, 36 years ago. That would have been, what, 1987? It was the last time I was a teenager. Wow, time flies, right? <laughs> it's funny, I never... I never thought I... I never pictured myself doing some of the things that I'm doing, even though, ironically, it's what I wanted to do. I just didn't know how to get there when I was younger. And, of course, things have changed so much uh, since then. You know, when I first contemplated doing broadcasting, I was very young, and it was something that I thought I would like to do, work in television or radio and do the production work that I do today. But but the pathway to that back then was 
not easy. And there were not nearly as many opportunities. Now today you can create your own thing on your own and learn and work at your craft and slowly get better at it as time goes on. The technology is available to most of us. Yes, money does have to be invested to, to produce something quality, but these days with, um, quite literally, with a, with a decent phone and a small wireless mic, you can put some pretty good content together. So there's a lot more opportunity out there, which I think is pretty cool. That... Um, the thing I always wanted to do, I started doing when I was 50, 51, 51, 2019, 2020, yeah, 2020, <laughs> and I, just before my 52nd birthday is when I started sort of this along with uh, the music podcasts that I do, the thing I always wanted to do, but this, this milieu, this medium, this, the subject matter here is something that I was reluctant to talk about for many, many years because I just simply didn't know how to discuss, you know, what I was feeling. I, there was a time when discussing your mental health in public was not only sort of verboten, but was very much frowned upon. I was like, oh, we don't discuss such things. I'm like, actually, we should discuss, discuss such things. Holding them inside is dangerous. It's poison, and it can really cause you a great deal of harm. These are things we need to talk about. Keeping them inside will only do you damage. And I don't want to see anybody suffer in the way I did. I don't, I don't have, you know, any regrets over the way things went in my life. It's how things were, so I can't get upset about it. But knowing what we know now, we can move forward and try and help as many people as possible by openly discussing what we're feeling. Now I recognize not everybody is capable of discussing it openly. However, however, just joining a forum like this and having somebody openly discuss it while you read the chat might be enough for you to get the help you may need. Or maybe this is helping you. I, I honestly don't know. My goal here is to just as help as many people as I can. That's all I ever wanted to do. And on that note, I hope I've been helpful this evening. And I hope to uh, get back again later this week. I'm going to try and get a few things done for you. I do promise I will endeavor to do my best, and hopefully things will work out the way I, the way I plan on them working out. Sometimes life gets in the way, right? But I thank you for joining me this evening. I do have to uh, hop on a, a call with a client in a moment. So I apologize about leaving early, but uh, sometimes that's just the way life is. But thank you for joining me this evening, and I hope that this has been of some help to you. I hope you're feeling a little bit better, and I will uh, endeavor to do my best to get a jazz show out this week, get some more um, short clip material to you, and try and go live again before the week is through. With any luck, things will work for me. And if not, you know I'll be back here next week. So take care. I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>